of my otaku friends, my name is Prof Otaku, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you for 1,000 subs. Honestly, it's it's just unreal. I started this channel on January 1st and July 1st, exactly six months is when I hit 1,000 subs. And I remember making the channel saying, you know, if I had 50 subs watch my video, that would be awesome. So to have a community of 1,000 that is interested in my videos is absolutely amazing. I appreciate all of you, and I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos. I hope I can create more content that is engaging and fun and informative. If you ever have any video ideas, just shoot them down in the comments. I'm more than happy to make them. So to celebrate 1,000 subs, we are doing a giveaway. Yay! <laughs> we are gonna have two winners this time, two gift cards. First one's gonna be a $25 gift card to Write Stuff, which is perfect for the big summer sale going on. And then the next one will be a gift card of your choice. This is a, mainly for international people, Amazon, um, Blackwells, whatever the international manga stores are. That will be the second choice. And so what you have to do is obviously you need to be subscribed to the channel, number one. Number two, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. This helps me uh, get in contact with you when you do win. And then if you don't have that, we can work around it. You know, just let me know down in the comments. The third thing is on the comments down below, leave your Instagram handle if you have one. And then also what anime or manga are you currently enjoying? So that's the giveaway. This is my way to say thank you guys for all your support and to give back to the community that has given so much to me. So leave those comments, tap that subscribe button, follow me on Instagram, and hey, you might be winning a gift card very, very soon. The giveaway itself is gonna be open for one week, so if you see the open tag on the title, it means that it's still going on. So, and then when it closes uh, seven days to this point, then that will be the end of the giveaway, and I will do a video announcing the winner. So to celebrate 1,000 subs on my Instagram about a week ago, I threw up, hey, ask me some questions. I'd love to do a question and answer. So that's what we're doing today. So you can get to know a little bit more about me. So let's get started. The first question comes from Jrod Purdom 7 and QK Hiren. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that. They both have the same question. Favorite rom-com, top five rom-com series of all time. I'm gonna make a whole video on this. So, but I will tell you my top five right now. Number five is Quintessential Quintuplets with Horamiya just under that. Let's see how the ending turns out, which is ending very, very soon. Number four is Wodokoi, Love is Hard for an Otaku. Number three is Dress Up Darling, a dark horse underrated series. Let me tell you what. Number two is Kaguya-sama, Love is War. <laughs> yeah, it got a 10 from me, but it is number two because my number one rom-com of all time is Sweat and Soap. <laughs> Check out my review on Sweat and Soap in one of my very early videos on my channel. But I absolutely love Sweat and Soap for its accurate and realistic depiction of a mature relationship for two working adults. It really speaks to me as a uh, mid-twenties otaku. The next question comes from Mangan Origin, and she says, favorite and least favorite manga? So my favorite manga is, of course, Billy Bat by Naoki Urasawa. Very underrated series because you can't get a hold of it, but it's absolutely phenomenal. I plan on doing a whole Naoki Urasawa video because I'm a Naoki Urasawa freak, and so, but I gotta finish all of them first. I need to read through Happy, and I also need to read through Master Keaton, and then I'll read through almost everything that he has published. Uh, then the least favorite manga that I've ever read was Loner Life in Another World. I think I got through halfway through volume one. I just like threw it away. It was not good. It's an isekai about a guy who goes into a this new world or whatever. His classroom gets like sucked into a portal or something. And um, all his classmates take all of the skills. So he's left with like the worst ones. And it's about him leveling up. It's bare bones, the power system stinks, the characters suck, the artwork is okay, but yeah, I could barely get through it. It just was not interesting at all. The next question comes from Hobbies of a Man, 
and he says, what got you into manga? I was a big anime person for a long time, watched anime throughout high school and college, and then uh, my ex-girlfriend at the time and I enjoyed watching anime together, so for her birthday one year, I decided to go ahead and buy her some manga. Then I read her manga that I bought for her, and then it was just a rabbit hole spiral from there. So yeah, that's how I got into manga, and I haven't stopped since. So I started September of 2019, so we're about to hit two years with my manga journey. So the next question comes from Jacob from Meet the Weeb family. Love their channel, <laughs> love their dynamics. Just a whole family of weebs and otakus just talking about otaku culture. It's absolutely awesome. Check their channel out. And his question is, favorite piece of brass dominated song or music? Um, for me, it's actually the second opening to Hibeki Euphonium. <laughs> That's a great anime, one of my favorites of all time by Kyoto Animations. And it's a, basically about this girl who joined the band at high school and it's the band's journey to win the national championship but the depiction of band is just so good and this piece is just brass fanfare heavy absolutely love it if I can play a clip I will Next question comes from the GOAT himself, the Prom G. He asks, what is your favorite cereal? My favorite cereal is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And uh, I have been eating the large, like family size boxes of Cinnamon Toast Crunch with the hopes of getting a shrimp head so that I can, <laughs> so I can get like some settlement money. <laughs> And if, if you guys don't know, somebody online found a shrimp head in the the Cinnamon Toast Crunch box. So they contacted General Mills Cereal and it was this whole back and forth and everybody on the internet was like watching this interaction. And General Mills wanted this guy to send the shrimp head, but he's like, I'm not sending it. You guys are going to destroy it. It was absolutely hilarious. So yeah, um, but I do love Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I actually eat a bowl of cereal uh, every day before I go to bed, which is super unhealthy. Don't do that. But I just... I can't get enough of it so <laughs> the next question comes from Andres Pinoslav and they say what is your most anticipated manga in English for the rest of the year and so for me it's actually two uh, uh, number five that's a Matsuma, Tai Matsumoto work and this is the same mangaka who did ping pong and cat to the Louvre and he is I've never actually read any of his works before because I just haven't been able to like get into it. It's just been on the backlog. But number five is super interesting. It's got sci-fi elements and and uh, post-apocalyptic type of thing. The artwork looks really cool. So yeah, I'm definitely interested to check it out. And then also another release, which is a digital release, I think from Viz. It's, I don't know if there's a physical announcement yet. Let me know down in the comments below, but it's Record of Ragnarok. Base Senpai had amazing things to say about it. It's just about big bulky gods just duking it out in a battle tournament. I mean, that's just how it is. But it's really, really interesting. I heard an anime just got released for it or announced. So yeah, it's definitely could see it being a really, really cool series. So those are two on my radar. Andres Pinoslav also asked me, who is your favorite female mangaka? I actually have two. Satsuki Yoshino is the mangaka behind Barakamon and uh, Honda Kun and Yoshino Zikuria, I think is how you pronounce that last part. But yeah, absolutely fantastic slice of life mangaka is able to keep things fresh and comedic uh, even though you know slice of life isn't generally I don't I wouldn't say like very interesting but sometimes it could get dull so yeah love Yoshino's work and I hope that you know she just got a series canceled I hope she comes back with something really really great and obviously one that's very popular amongst the community is Hiromi Arakawa. She is the mangaka behind Full Metal Alchemist and Silver Spoon. I have not read the mangas for those, but I have watched the animes and some of the best storytelling that I've ever seen. Just the character development and the thought process behind just creating a deep, concise storyline. Absolutely love her. One of my favorite mangakas of all the time. Next question comes from Bunny and PB, and I absolutely love them. You know, she's got an adorable dog named PB, and she's got an absolutely fantastic YouTube channel. I love her editing skills. Check her out. Her question is, 
what's your favorite song? For me, that is the Violet Evergarden opening theme. The composer for the whole soundtrack for Violet Evergarden, which is a fantastic anime, by the way, my favorite anime of all time. The composer is Evan Call. He's a Berkeley School of Music graduate uh, in Boston, and he's half Japanese, half American. And so he takes the Americanized way of, of orchestral writing and puts it into anime, which I think is fantastic. The whole basis is of a Violet with the typewriter and he incorporates the typewriter into the opening with like the rhythmic juxtapositions of the orchestra. It's so well done and I cannot highly recommend the soundtrack enough. My favorite soundtrack of all time as well. The next question comes from Shikhar Zero Times One, and their question was thoughts on the Spice and Wolf light novel. I have not read the Spice and Wolf light novel yet, so I cannot give an assessment. However, I did buy the limited collector's edition, the hardback of the first 17 volumes that Yen Press put out. Yen Press did a re-release of this, which was absolutely nuts. And I jumped on that. I saw it on Twitter and I was like, I have to get this because who knows, it probably will never come back again but I bought it. It's sitting at my apartment in Mississippi and I cannot wait to open it. I plan on doing a whole unboxing video of it in our first impressions. Next up is from the Black Goats King. He's awesome. He does a lot of videos on Tokyo Ghoul stuff on YouTube. Check him out. He's really, really cool. His question is, what's your favorite light novel and what manga broke you the most emotionally? I've read not too many light novels, but I have dipped my toe in there. So my favorite light novel is actually from Monogatari season one. And it's the prequel, I guess you'd call it the prequel. It's the prequel before Baka Monogatari, Kizu Monogatari. And so this is the prequel where, you know, we see how uh, Aragaki, I think is his last name, how he becomes a uh, vampire. Really, really fascinating. I love the pacing of it. I got through the whole thing in one sitting. So highly recommend the Monogatari series as a whole. And the manga that broke me emotionally was Silent Voice. Um, this is a manga about bullying, about this girl who is deaf and this boy who bullies her in elementary, like primary school. And then in high school, you know, they split ways and it's about his redemption story of him, like trying to reconcile like what happened with this deaf girl. It's really, really beautiful and it's so well done and it depicts bullying in such a great way. Um, I was bullied a lot in middle school and high school and even into college and it was it was pretty tough for me so it really hit home for me as like you know people can change and you know as an adult now I don't care you know you're you're a kid you don't you, you do these things and it's just like why you look back at it why do you do it? And so bullying hits home for me. And so this is a really beautiful story. Everybody needs to have it in their manga collection. There's some hardback uh, collector's editions coming out. One is coming out in September and another one in 2022. And it'll be half the series will be split into each one. And they also have some new material. So I'm super excited to see it. The next question comes from Facial Ed and they say pancakes or waffles. <laughs> For me, it is waffles, specifically chicken and waffles. All right, I'm a Southern boy. I grew up in the Bay Area in California. I grew up in San Jose, California, but I've been living in the South for almost a whole decade now. And chicken and waffles is one of the best things on the planet. And I will go to the grave with that statement. So yeah, if you haven't tried chicken and waffles before, Southern staple, you'll absolutely love it. The next question comes from Malt Collects and Sells, and they ask, what have you bought blind and hated? Um, I've never personally bought anything blind, but one of my friends bought a blind buy for me, and that was Mint Chocolate Volume 1. It was in a video called Nanotaku's Pick My Manga Haul. Check that one out. It's very, very funny. I enjoyed making it so, so much. But yeah, Mint Chocolate Volume 1, it's about a, a girl and a boy. The girl likes the boy, and then the boy becomes her step brother and then the par their parents marry each other so it's this dynamic of this relationship but now they live together very very like dirty but it's actually a well-done rom-com very surprised so yeah <laughs> that was a blind buy that 
I enjoyed. There's not a blind buy that I hated though. I don't do blind buys. I wanna make sure I research it because I don't I don't wanna spend money and then just like not like it. All right, the next question comes from Pyrick Parker and they ask three manga series that you think are extremely underrated. Uh, first one for me is Billy Bat and that's by Naki Urasawa and that's just because it's so inaccessible to the community because there's no official publication in English. I personally have self prints of the manga, so the, of the physical manga, so I just got really lucky. But yeah, it will never get released in English because of the comparison between Billy Land and Disneyland. I'll leave a picture up so that you can see it. Naki Urasawa even said himself, it's never gonna get released in English. There's just no way that Disney would let it fly. The next one that I really, really think is an underrated series is Voices of a Distant Star. This is by Matoshi Shinkai, the same creator of Your Name and uh, uh, Weathering With You. So this is a story about a girl and a boy who like each other and then the girl goes off to fight this space battle with aliens and then she's like controlling a mecha robot. And so they send text messages to each other but she continues to go farther and farther away during this war. And so the text messages get longer and longer like in terms of time that they receive them. So it's a very interesting dynamic, cool sci-fi element, great one shot. I highly recommend it. Third one is Laid Back Camp. Not a lot of people have read it on my anime list, but I do believe that this is an absolutely fantastic uh, manga. If you want to, if you love Japanese landscape, you want to know more about camping, but you also just want something cute and relaxing, this is the manga for you. I cannot recommend it enough. The last question comes from Elite Collector. Phenomenal YouTuber, great friend of mine. I highly recommend you check his channel out. He makes some great, great content. I'll leave a little link in the description below. His question is, seeing as you are a music major, music person, what are some of your favorite artists, bands, composers? Here's a fun fact. I don't listen to music that much anymore because my, I guess, nine to five is music. When I'm off the clock, I don't really want to listen to music anymore because I'm just kind of musicked out. I have to kind of pace myself. So um, what I do listen to though, I do listen to a lot of anime soundtracks, especially if I'm doing some computer work. Um, but yeah, I don't listen to any like um, current music or like classical music, even though I'm a tuba player. So that's just my personal choice. However, as a kid, um, I did like uh, 30 Seconds to Mars. I loved their song, Kings and Queens. It was one of my favorite songs growing up. And then I, of course, I was a 90s kid, so I listened to all the 90s songs, like uh, Ice Ice Baby and Green Day and all that stuff. So, <laughs> but I was just trying to be a cool kid. I wasn't, I don't think I actually enjoyed it. So, <laughs> so there's a fun fact about me. And that's it for the Q&A. Thank you to all who sent me questions. I plan on doing a couple of other videos interacting with the community, especially as I get the community tab. So look out for those videos. But yeah, thank you guys so much again. As always, if you like the video, hit that like button, tap the subscribe button, tap that notification bell so that you know when more of my videos come out. Leave a comment, follow my Instagram, enter that giveaway, and you can win yourself a gift card. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.